go on fast. And people will love it because we just love to go fast. Right? So any game where you can go fast, people will like it. And most games are that way. The good game is based on extremely simple ideas that, that people have always loved. Uh, next game, we have to turn. Uh, it was the athletic of Space Invaders. It was, uh, we had just got the license, Atari had bought the license to Space Invaders. Uh, I decided to make it on the Atari 400. But being that I was 22, and I thought I was really, really good that I made one game, I decided to change Space Invaders. It wasn't going to be the Space Invaders. It was going to be with me, my own version of Space Invaders, which was a really horrible mistake. Because the game doesn't look like Space Invaders at all, right? And it kind of looked dorky, like a dorky rocket ship, and nobody really knew why I had not copied the original Space Invaders. And I was thinking, well, I don't know, I'm just going to make how I want. Uh, I put my initials in the bottom two. You can see them make an R and an F at the bottom. And the bottom two rows. Uh, and the game was, I thought it was good, but the very first thing that the person in sales said when we saw it was, why don't you just copy Space Invaders? And I said, oh. So we were talking to the Yeah. So people hated it. And I, was, I felt really kind of uh, bad. I had no idea. But they just let me make it. They didn't care. Uh, again, Space Invaders is based on a very, very popular play pattern that, you know, other than going fast, the other one that was really popular was the game of Kill Everything. And uh, many games are based on Kill Everything, including Space Invaders and Mr. Command. And still, there's a million games based on Kill Everything. And if you have a game where you have to kill everything, people will like it, right? That's kind of what you do. So I, when I felt so bad after the Space Invaders, the next game I made was Mr. Command, which was uh, another conversion for Point Out, but this time, you know, me and this guy Brad had talked about, well, we could make Mr. Command and we could make Asteroids. And we just basically said, well, which one do you want to make? We want Shambo, and I won, so I have to make Mr. Command. Uh, and I decided with Mr. Command that I was going to make the most perfect copy of a game that I could make, because I felt so bad about space and So Mr. Command was about another nine months of work, and, and, uh, but I think I really tried to copy everything I could about the original. So the sound effects and the, the way the story system, I tried to make it true to the original that I could. And it's probably the most successful game I did in Atari because of that. You know, because I copied the original. Uh, and that was only because I was I mean, I mean, I mean, trying to make it true to the original. So it was, uh, I put my initials in the bottom right corner to get no points, because uh, that was what we did at the time. And it was a very, you know, we sold, I think, three million copies of it. And I was very happy with it. And again, the play pattern of this was a man that's just like uh, Space Invaders. You kill everything. That's, that's the game. If you kill everything, the game will sell. Well, and I, you know, I, I felt very good after Mr. Command. I felt like, wow, I'm going to get a big bonus. And people treat me really well. I was 23 years old. And I like got a new car. And then, the bonus that year, the Atari was a turkey. They gave all the people that worked there a turkey. And that was what we got. It was our, our, uh, our thank you. I remember getting that turkey and thinking, wow, they're stupid. You know, I would have been so happy with, you know, a couple thousand dollars. Sorry. Uh, so that was the, the moment that I got this turkey coupon that I remember simply going on with each time. That was that was the moment that I got the turkey. So I remember I joined I joined uh AI to create this company Imagine, which was I think it was second uh independent company after Activision. And my motivation was very strong because I've done my best work, I think like a lot of creative people, when I'm really pissed off. That's why that's when like, people write great love songs and great stories are told when people are angry or upset. I was upset at being treated badly, so I decided to make a game, being attacked with the game, or I decided I'm going to make a game that's just going to make a Atari crash. So my whole motivation was just to make them cry when they cry. I worked so hard on it because I was really to fun. And that was the deal to have in the first game, you can imagine. Again, it's based on the same idea of killing everything. Uh, the, 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 the original point was based off of the game of the galaxy, which is a very popular point of view at the time, where things above you try to come down and kill you. Uh, and that was, uh, 
Yeah. If you would basically say to me, you know, if you, if you work hard on the way you make the views and the sound effects, uh, but the game itself is you know, extremely simple. The idea of you get uh, as many different kinds of features you pop like, I think they're 84. Uh, and after you kill all 84, originally the game would just stop. Because after you kill 84, the level of the guys, it took about three days before you got a phone call and somebody had bought the game and finished it and now it that way. So we had to re-release the game to let it go on forever. And after that, nobody would ever get more than a game for a game attack. There are two rooms of the game on the market. One that will add up to 84 levels and one that won't. Uh, but you know, very successful game for a new company, Magic. Again, both on the same idea of killing everything. Which at this point would be kind of boring to me. I mean, I've done four games where you just kill everything. I said, okay, I'm not for that. Uh, so, I started working on this game, uh, Cosmic Arc, which is supposed to be a very, yeah, the idea of Cosmic Arc is get out of shooting everything with an original, first original game that I made, where I made it up. Uh, and it's supposed to be a very gentle game where you don't kill anything and, and you go, you know, you fly the spaceship to the planet and you got to go rusty to and everything. Uh, which was kind of a very different type of And people, people like it not as much. You had to go rescue these little guys. Uh, and there was nothing to kill, right? So it was like, what? You know, there was nothing to kill. But that was kind of like what we were exploring, different kind of games. Uh, and the, and then the game cost of art is based on uh, this second play pattern that uh, is quite popular and still is very popular. And that's the popular is called Cleanup. Any game you to clean stuff up is very, you know, go back to Pac-Man, you go back to the family. There's a million games where the idea is there's a big mess. You're a game, right? You have to clean everything up. If you clean everything up, you win. Uh, Checkers is like this. Uh, most public games are like that. And again, yeah, it's a very old play pattern that uh, works. It just works. And you can see games based on cleaning stuff up forever. Because it just, it just works. Yeah. So now I've got five games and I was ready to, like, to like, do something else. I wanted to do a puzzle game. Because I had done enough of these space games. I wanted, I wanted to do a puzzle game and I wanted to be two players instead of one. I mean, I wanted, you know, I was very experiment. I also had just gotten a lot of royalty that I was... I mean, I did it with a hundred, right? I was in the book of something like, you know, People do this, right? Like their third record album. It's never as good as the first time. But they this started to do this all the time stuff, you know, find a new house and you know, upgrade my girlfriend and then it would change, you know. So now I make this puzzle game uh, called Cubicle, which, you know, when there's a simple game, you have two people that are trying to try to solve this puzzle at the same time. You know, all these different ways. Well, this game tested terribly. It was like nobody wanted to play it. All the kids at the time were still into, you know, shooting stuff and you know, racing. And this is what's this? You know, so nobody... Nobody did it. The guitar decided, or Magic decided not to produce it. It was the first work I've ever done that was a release. And I was like, oh, you know, it was like terrible. So since then, about half my work hasn't been released. But at that time, it was very unusual to not release it. So I was mortified. So they made 50 copies of it with roughly in the box. So that was a later release to find that. Collector market, and everyone of course loved it because on the collector market, the worse the game, the fewer that were made, the more valuable it is, right? <laughs> so, so the really bad games are the ones that are worth the most. And then the good games, you know, these games are worth like 50 cents, they're too good. Uh, so Cubicle is still a very valuable game. And it plays okay, but it's not anything that has anything to do with the market line. So that was, you know, really my experimental phase. I came back and took a color, then said, okay, I want to make a real gentle game, I want to make, I want to make it more political correctness, I want to do it, I want to make a game where there's anything you shoot, you can visit space. So they made this game called Saturn. It was, it was all about, it was a dolphin. The game started with a dolphin, and, and then it was a made up as I went along. You know, it's an example of what happens when you make up a game as you go along. I never really had a vision of it. It would start out, you would look down underwater, and then you would know, around, so 
from the CDI. They wanted it to be in the blue room. They wanted it to be a family thing. They didn't want it to be a gamer product. So the game that they let us make, it was a game of third degree. It was like a game show. So you basically try to, try to figure out what your friends would do in these awkward situations. You know, the first game that I got to use a real camera, uh, the, the first uh, digital camera that was on the market, the Sony Mavica camera, we were a prototype in development that we got to use it, but it was very fun. So then we had a digital picture and we used you know, these digital devices uh, to, to create. But nobody thought to see that later. I think they spent like 17, you know, copies of the game. Uh, because you know, we have to find some of the vodka player and like your game. And there was like nobody. Uh, but we learned a hell of a lot. We learned how to hire, hire actors, we learned how to do audio, we learned how to, you know, be like a little bit blown up for that stuff. So it was a very early experience. It was just not very really good problem. The game is a third degree, you know, again, based on the game of keeping secrets. You know, you have a secret, you want to keep it, your friends trying to guess it. That's the basic game. Uh, the second game for, for on CDI is based on magic, because I was very interested in magic, and I wanted to do a version of the old trick, you know, the, the, the fortune teller. So we did this game where the magician is on the screen with the magic to the screen. And this, you know, it's my favorite of the things I've ever made. I love it, but it's sold like, again, 17 copies. Because, you know, to sell a magic trick to someone, you have to show it to them. Nobody buys a magic trick without being a box. You have to see it demo and then go, wow, I love that. So nobody, nobody bought this thing. Uh, but I love it. I mean, you have to do tricks to this guy, and, you know, he was too busy to flip him and to, to you. It was very, uh, you know, very lovely. Uh, and so, you know, the problem, the problem with, with when you work in the field is that nobody can see your work five years later. And so most of the things I've made, like my daughter who's about five, can so never be able to play this because the machines that play the game don't exist anymore. Well, and they do if she comes here. But if she's in the real world, it's like, how can she ever play Max Magic? She gets to drag the trailer up from downstairs and get the cord to work, and it's you know, never going to happen. So that's not true to someone who doesn't like songs. That's not true to someone who makes movies. Like, someone who makes movies, you can see the movie 20, 30, 40 years later. If you make a game, no one sees it, no one will play it. Come on, online games. I mean, these games like Farmville, and these games, kids play it, and you learn it's gone. Or it's given something else. There's, there's no way to get to play it again. And at least you people can go back and play your retro, retro games that you grew up with. And, and they're and lovely with the new experience, these games. This is not true. You can't even go play Farmville. So it's never been able to go back and play the Farmville that he grew up with. So there's no that's sort of part of the community. It's all virtual, well run away from other things, you know, we 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 So, these experiences that I'm on, they're gone forever. And I think that's really kind of sad, right? Because there's no history. There's absolutely no history to get So after the Netflix Defense Journal game, I got involved with Sega, making interactive movies. Which are, you know, it, it is a time when we're talking early 90s, where there's this whole thing that Silicon Valley and Hollywood would merge. And that was whatever we thought of it. It was called Silicon Valley. It was the Silicon Valley. The Silicon Valley was this whole period of time where we would go to the movie studios and talk about these great games we were going to make with their film. And they came to us and talked about all how we could make games out of the movies. And, you know, they would talk to everyone, but it was very hard to do. Because it cost like you know, millions of dollars to make a movie, and nobody wanted the game guys to come on the set for three days to, to shoot extra scenes. It was like, no way. The day was not interesting. So we had to make our own movie to make, to make a game. The game we made with Bank Trap, which was, you know, these kids were in the house, and we had to run around the house and, and uh, stop the monsters. And, and the thing about Bank Trap is it was a very Simple. It wasn't even a game. It was really more of a, a, a demo of what you could do with your interactive movie. Uh, the 
goes to like, he goes to his plot and his story. Uh, you don't look at four, you can just move the camera. So the camera is either in the living room or you can watch the camera in the dining room. You can't watch those. So to play the game, you have to play it through many times. And the idea of the cast these bad guys, right? And if you're here at the right time, you push the button, then you can catch it in the trap, right? And if you don't push the button, you have to get the trap in here. Right, you trap them in the gun. Yeah, that was the big, the big thing, right? Yeah, right? And you have to build with house. Like, you have to build a house for the trap door in it. So you have to build it. So it was very expensive. And after we shot it, we couldn't edit it. We couldn't go back and change it. Like, we can't get back now. We can go change the, what happened. Once we shoot it on film, it's done. So it was a very difficult game to tweak and, and change later. The first game is done. You make the game, you play it, you adjust it, you play it, you adjust it, you keep doing that until the game is good. You can't do that with the game like you're doing it. You, you got what you got. You can't go back and add a new scene if the house that you built has been destroyed. Uh, so, the, 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 the game is what it is. It was the first thing that happened to really We got very, very poor. We did it because we didn't offer it. The hundreds of hours of play that a normal thing would be offered, like, you know, the, what was it, you know, the, the, the Sonic. It plays much better than that trap. Because that trap only has 30 or 80 minutes of video, and that's it. Let's just move the 80 minutes of video, there's no more game. Uh, so it didn't, it wasn't very well regarded. But it was just really, I don't know why, you know, my friends that made it. They, they, they just forgot to read it for them, like, three months ago. It was kind of fun. I mean, it's very easy, right? It looks pretty easy. But, uh, so, so we did another game for, for them. It was called Fear Shark, which was even more violent. It was basically, the way these games work is we just put characters in the game and they would yell at you. And they would kind of just yell at you. So most of you, people yelling at you, telling you how bad you are. shot in the video, there's not much you can do but to turn left, right, go up and down. Uh, and you know, it was, it, was, it was okay, but as a game, I don't even play nearly as well as a, as a regular digital game. You just move to turn left on the screen, because this is all shot through a dead in the movie. Uh, there's nothing that's really changing. Uh, but these games were also very graphic, and they, they got people kind of, you know, concerned that the game becoming more realistic. And that led to this whole political thing that happened where uh, the Senate, the US Senate decided that human beings were becoming too violent. And Night Trap was really the, the prototype game they used to show everybody how bad the game is were. They're chasing girls around, that's bad because, you know, for all those reasons. And so these violent games were a lot of, lot of heat. And it forced the government, to force the game industry to put ratings on games. But it was really embarrassing to me, because I had no idea when we made the game that, oh my god, who was going to care? And all of a sudden, I'm seeing on TV, on the news, and Captain Kang the Rain came up on TV and said it was sad, and, and it was just a lot, we got a lot of heat. Uh, and I, I felt terrible about it. So it was that moment that I decided the next game that I would do would be with the cutest possible thing in the world. The night trap was so violent and so like anti what was good at the time. So then we made the puppy dog. And the puppy dog became one of my best one of my best products that I've done given commercial success. We sold I think four million copies of this product and all of us was a dog. Uh, and the dog we gave it away for free. Uh, this is mid nineties, late nineties. He gave the dog away for free for the five days of the food. If you use the body of food, the dog would have been able to eat and just cry. She would just cry and cry and cry and cry. Until so you called us on the phone and we unlocked a lifetime supply of food. And it was 
the names of how many people yes. called us and said, okay, we've got we need more people to do that job. And uh, but we just tried to find the team. Uh, so it became very popular and we sold it to uh, Mattel, we sold it to Unicraft, and we still have this product called, I think, Rich 8. Uh, but the, the idea took the puppy down, or feed that. And we wanted to do anything to feed it and nurture it, and then, you know, as long as you feed it, it will be your friend. And the, the basic game, or the reason people like it, because the basic game behind the dog is that, you know, is that you matter. Any game that you matter when you are somehow important, that's why people like to have pets, that's why people like to have pets, because you matter. And it doesn't matter if the thing that matters, that you matter to, is virtual or real. People react to the dog as if it was totally real. It was, uh, you know, the feeling about your dog is the same as if it was a real dog, you know. If it got hurt, if it got sick, you know, it would be and I was still, and still now, it would be a little bit of a while to leave up with someone who had the dog for 20 years, and now the computer crashed, and now what do they do? I don't know. And they're running Windows 98, you know. So, you know, that was, so, that, so, that, so, so dogs are the last thing that I made. So basically, the 13 products that covered a pretty wide vista of stuff, and, uh, and then the modern platform that I really, uh, I think that I'm going to participate, I don't think you want to participate in this. It would take way too long to make. I mean, if you have dogs, it's about maybe one or two million dollars. Games like Minecraft, it is about fifty thousand dollars. And now, of course, the games are a hundred million dollars, and there's no way that it's fun to design for those things because it can, it can take zero risk. You spend a hundred million dollars on a product, you can't try to invent some new thing. You have to copy something that you know absolutely is going to work. This is why the, the modern sort of derivative. Like everything is kind of like the last thing. You don't take a lot of design risk because it can't. It's just too expensive. So, anyway, let's have a few other questions. I'm happy to, to chat about everything. So, uh, are you going to start over? No? No? Yeah. Take care of the microphone. Which one of the games are you most proud of? Well, well, the two dimensions, you know, financially, the best thing that I did with Doc, who was some of the best and I was the owner of the company, um, Mr. Command did very well, I mentioned Google Tech. The game that I liked the best, then, is I love Max Magic, because it's more of me than anything else. It, it feels like me. You know, I love magic, and I love this early stuff, and I, I, I like the fact that if I look at now and look at the same, it's always an old guy in a box. It's still an old guy in a box. So it kind of looks as good now as when I released it. But it's a little bit of a It's just something that was supposed to be new, like, like, you know, uh, you know, you kind of, you know, this kind of thing. So you take that shot. Which was, at the time, it was really cool because it was 1985. And it looks like 1985, right? So you go back to it now and it looks, oh my god, this looks like 1985. You know, the characters the dress, the dress, the 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 Oh my God. 
dollar days. And they're always very defensive. Like, how much do you think by day? Like, oh, just look, just look, you invest in the money. Yeah, so they feel very embarrassed that their kids play games or that their kids watch videos. Like they somehow feel bad for us if you play these games too much. And I get a lot of heat. Yeah, I mean, I always have. And I still, I would say maybe three or three emails a week from somebody saying that my kid plays these games too much and why are you making better? It's like, because we're not, it's not, it's like we're living candy bar. You know, we're not, it's like we're living candy bar. It's not our job to, Put nutrition to the, to the kids. Our job is to entertain them. Your job is to like, turn it off. And then we, you know, so often. He gave the entertainment kid all day. That's why I have 120,000 years of uh, waste of time. Uh, I don't know if we should do that much. I think people really love their kids playing the games way too much and then and end up blaming the manufacturer. It's like giving them candy all day long and blaming the guy who makes candy. Like, you can't do that. That is unfair. Yeah. Four questions? So, I was wondering about, you You developed many games for different uh, platforms. systems. Platforms. Platforms. Yeah. yeah, so I was wondering which of the platforms were the, or your favorite to develop for? Well, they're all really bad, right? So all platforms instantly run out of memory, and they're instantly out of whatever resources they give you. The original Atari, they had 128 bytes of RAM. That was it. You can remember 128 bytes. That's all. But, you know, they used it. They made games, they made chess. They made, uh, you know, they made very sophisticated games. It's just whatever, whatever the person has. And so it's like, I look at the old games like silent movies, right? They didn't have sound. So they figured out, they figured out other ways to tell stories. Uh, I love the Atari for the I mean, it was very versatile. I thought it had a lot of things you could do that we discovered. There was no operating system. There was no rules. We control the electron B. We can we made the we made the thumbs and signal. We did that. So with that, we had so much control. There is now you know the more modern platform. Somebody somebody in Holland wrote the operating system. So you can only do what the operating system lets you do. And if God help you when you say, put a dot here, how long does it take that dot to show up? You, know, you don't have the, the you, don't, you don't talk to the hardware. Without talking to the hardware, you can't make the thing do what you want it to do. So I kind of like the way it's put it That said, it's like a silent movie. You know, there's no, there's no uh, ability to do anything good. And you have to use it yourself. So, yeah. I more questions? Hi, Rikata. Yes, yes. Uh, hello, my name is Yannick from Holland. I have a question about NICA. Yeah. Uh, I looked at the why, why it uh, started in 1985, you say that, but in the, if I Google it, it's 1987. Yeah. The movie is 1987, but uh, Sega is from uh, 1995. Yeah. So what happened was... Five years uh, later. So you tell me about yeah. the history about that. Yeah, we made... Yeah, I was also yeah. Donna Plato. What? Donna uh, Plato, the, the, the girl in the... Oh, Dana Plato, well, she... she no. Dana Plato was uh, the star of that track. She was also... She was in Hollywood on, on her way down. She was doing a lot of problems in... She was well known, but she was not getting good parts because she was a drug addict and she was just on her way down. So we, we caught her on her way down. I think it was the last project she did, uh, which is too bad because she was very funny. But, but she ended up, uh, unfortunately, passing away to you after that trash. And yeah, she was just kind of you know, on her way out. It's very hard to when people become popular when they're very young. Right, as a teenager, and then she's not 25, and she's not as popular, and she's like, that's her whole life, it's really popular. So, to get attention, she needs to do more and more outrageous things. She ended up robbing a little store, and yeah, that was it. I think that's right now. My drop is made for a piece of hardware that has grown. It was one of the names back in the late 80s calls. It's an interactive video tape system. It was never released. It was called 
watching that for television. We do four tracks of video on the tape, on the tape, and we can jump between the tracks. That was my backdrop. That was my backdrop. It was made the way it was. It was a real story. We could jump around and change the story. We could put the camera in the room. Uh, so we did it and make the story. Uh, Hasbro. Hasbro decided not to release the system in 1989. In fact, it wasn't going to go to the market. Uh, because it was a big, big, big bet to the Rocky and Zenda. So we said, no, we're not going to do that. So they killed the whole thing. The people that made that crowd, Tom Zeno and that company, bought the rights back. And I think five years later, it was 1995, as he said, they could do Sega to put out on the Sega platform. Is it 95? So yeah, it wasn't made for the Sega. It was made for the Rocky Tape. At the time, I think it would have gone out of the Nintendo, but Sega had the, the left video processing to let the game run. So that was why it was released really later. That was why it looked the way it looked originally. Uh, it's, it's not from uh, the late uh, 80s. It looks like it was not the game Yeah, the hairstyle, but that, that was when the game was made. That was when the movie was shot. Yeah. And yeah, it was, it was much later that it came out on Sega. And then now it got really released again. Now it looks ridiculous. But you yeah, know, with a retro fan, I think that's amazing. Yeah. I don't know people look at it, I'm like, ah, it is that. More questions? More questions? Is this all? Yeah. Um, what kind of developing tools are we able to do? So it's hard. It's hard. Yeah, it's hard. It's hard. It's hard. It's hard. It's hard. Yeah, so I, I ended up making the very first graphics editor in Atari. It was a little, it ran on the 400 800. It was, a, it was a piece of graphic on the screen, and we could go push dots in, and that would really show you what the graphic would look like, and then you push it on and it would give you the hex output, and you could go right into your code. But yeah, there was no choice. It was all. You would write your code on uh, line paper and that's all. You hand it to, uh, to the people, the two girls in the time, who type your code into a machine, and they would give you a paper tape. And you would take the paper tape to a development system, load it in, and that is the way you got a code in there. If you wanted to change the code, you'd have to write something off the paper, give it to the girl, and they could then give you another paper tape. So you could do that twice a day. So we learned that we had to be very good about writing good code. You know, there was nothing like that. You sit down and write code and see if it works and keep compiling. You know, it, was, it takes you a whole day to get one round of your code back as the way you can test it. You, you make sure that, that you're going to do a lot every day. You write good code and you put it in your head. So I, I think it's not just a much better phone because we couldn't uh, to hack something together. But yeah, there was, it was very familiar. Yeah, yeah. Paper tape. More questions? Yeah. Yeah. Paper tape. What is your favorite game? Do you mean game game or video game or what? Yeah, video game. Video game? Your favorite video game? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, I love jazz, I love cafe. I love, I love, I love those great games. I love the man. I love, and the current games, it's just too hard. You know, this is the one who, the one who, the one who, the one who, the last month, you know, you were in the room with us. You know, how many people are trying to kill this game? Fortnite? So, is that what you guys said? It's impossible. I mean, I could play the game and realize for the rest of my life and never, ever win. Never. So, I'll never win. So, my 15 year old cousin, I mean, he can crush it. You know, but I'll never, ever be a good with him. You know, he's reflexively better and smarter than me. And it's like, I believe there's a market for simpler games that you can win. I want to go back and win in one night. And I don't know why nobody made this game. Because it would be such... I know so many people that want to do it and they can just beat it. You know? And right now I'm doing it because it's too hard for me. It's like too much work. I'm not going to sit there and go online and look at the, look at the, the, the cheap code and all that. I'm just, like, just going to rent it, play it for two hours like a movie, you know, throw up the Death Star, and I'm living right and I'm done. And no one has made that game yet. And I, I, I gotta believe in the market for it. There's a lot of people who play it, right? So, yeah. More questions? What 
What are you doing now? Now. You know, I'm going to go to the dad, and then I'm going to the dad late in life, so I know that. And then I'm going to go to the dad. And then I'm going to go to the dad. And I'm going to go to the dad. And then I'm going to go to the dad. And then I'm going to go to the dad. And then I'm going to go to the dad. And then I'm going to go to the dad. And then I'm going to go to the dad. And then I'm going to go to the dad. And then I'm going to go to the dad. And then I'm going to go to the men, they'll play any game as long as they're in with them. There's no thing that they won't do. Right? They don't dance, they don't do the same thing. Right? So, so they kind of look at it. And, uh, and so, yeah, they, 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 it wasn't as big of a market as I thought. And I spent about five years developing products to the female you know, like trading market, and it turns out that the market was only one thing. It's like, you can check it out. It's a cool thing. It's not cool, and I think I'm kind of done with being proper. Right? I made a lot of things for them. I'm happy with the ones I made. And, uh, I feel like we're going to make a little game and kill each other. And, you know, I don't know. It seems to me the game is now, well, it's better for the kid with the new things. And it's good. That's what's better. One more for our last person. Thank you. Very nice to have you here.